Greetings, beloved, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I want to take this moment to extend a personal invitation to you to join us here at the St. James Church on Saturday, March the 14th and Sunday, March 15th, 2015, as St. James embarks upon its 41st annual World Mission Conference right here at the St. James Church. This year, in keeping with our theme of excellence of our 130th anniversary, we are indeed excited to have some of our nation's greatest teachers and preachers of the gospel share with us on the subject matter of missions. Our conference will begin that Saturday morning with breakout sessions at 10 a.m. We have Mrs. Sadie Moody from Rocky Mount sharing with our adults, as well as Mrs. Cheryl Brown from Baltimore, Maryland, coming to share with our youth. The day will continue that Saturday with a worship service at 11 o'clock a.m. And we are so excited to have none other than Reverend Dr. Sherry Arnold Graham, the former Executive Secretary Treasurer of our Women's Home and Foreign Baptist Convention, sharing with us that Saturday morning at 11 o'clock. Lunch will be served on that Saturday following the service, and the conference will continue that Sunday, March the 15th at 11 o'clock a.m. Coming to St. James Missionary Baptist Church on that Sunday morning will be none other than the Reverend Dr. David Emmanuel Goatley, the Executive Secretary Treasurer of the Lot Carey Foreign Mission Convention. We are indeed excited and would love to have you come and share with us as we embrace and we discuss missions locally and globally. Again, Saturday, March the 14th, Sunday, March 15th, join us here at the St. James Church for our World Mission Conference. I'm led to take a closer look at this second word from the cross. Because, beloved, if you look at the second saying from the cross, you will come to discover that there was not just one saying, it was actually three. In other words, I find not just one cross. But here at this moment, I see three crosses. Y'all gonna walk with me for a minute. In this word, I see a process to which man is brought into a right relationship with God. In that moment, I see three men with three different perspectives, with three different messages, but one eternal result. And if I had time in here today, I wish I had time. God, I wish I had time on this first Sunday of the month as we begin this month of mission I've come today to shake us up here a little bit uh, as it relates to reaching the masses uh, because it was at the cross y'all uh, where the words that Oatman Johnson really had in mind uh, he said how to reach the masses uh, men of every birth for an answer uh, Jesus gave the key uh, he said if I God help me uh, be lifted up see you done missed it already because when he said lift him he wasn't talking about the praise when he said lift him he wasn't talking about the worship he says if you lift me by remembering what I did at the cross watch me draw y'all ain't saying nothing you want to see a church full you want to see a church overflowing you want to see a church busting at the seams I dare you to get rid of your hidden agenda and your ulterior motive and and remember the cross. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> well, the word from the cross. Y'all got time? The word from the cross was simply this day. God help me in here. Thou shalt be with me in paradise. Now, without losing the power of the message, y'all, please grant me about 15 minutes that I would note this text as this text presents three different crosses holding three different men with three different messages but one powerful result. Y'all ready to ride? Let's look at it because the first cross I see in this text is the cross of rebellion. I'm in the text, I'm in the text, I'm in the text. As a matter of fact, you might want to grab your Bible. I'm in the text, I'm in the text. Because in this conversation between these three men, the first man to speak is found in verse 39. 
alone when the Bible says and one of the male factors when he saw him hanged much like him railed on him God help me preach saying if thou be the son of God save yourself and us too can I deal with it because the word rail in the Greek God can I preach this thing comes from the word blasphemio which means to speak evil of to bring a false charge against it's where we get the word blaspheme it means to lie y'all ain't saying nothing to speak evil of a person the thing that messed me up about this deacon dance it was the nerve of this man in his predicament messed up as he was trying to bring evil against a man who had done nothing lord i wish i had somebody to help me here because the word from the cross are y'all ready for this shows me just how easy it is for the devil to blind the eyes of men and women oh my god thinking that it's too hard to be saved the word from the cross shows me just how quick the devil will have you thinking that it's too late that you have messed up you've done too much wrong you made too many mistakes oh my god I wish I had some real Christians in here I don't need you pseudo saved folks I need some real Christians who said I've had some real issues I've done some stuff I'm ashamed of I've been places I never should have went hung out with some boogers and my god I don't know why I even got hooked up with him in the first place. But I'm so glad that if he had to reach way down. Can I preach it like I feel it? He came and picked me up. Pulled me out of my mess. Y'all want to be honest? Because I still got some folk looking at me like I'm talking pig Latin. Where you folk in here? That'll be just like Bill Gaither. Bill Gaither said I was shackled by a heavy burden. Beneath a load of guilt and shame. But then the hand of Jesus uh, touched me uh, and I'm no where y'all at in here uh, that can say I was sick uh, and he touched me uh, I was messed up in the mind uh, but he touched me uh, I was drunk but he touched me uh, I was high but he touched me uh, I was broke but he touched me uh, I had an evil attitude but he touched me uh, I had a nasty disposition uh, but he turned me around Can I go back to last Sunday real quick? Uh-huh. Can't nobody. Like Moving right along. <laughs> yeah, that's that's first thing I see because the reality of it is this y'all, no matter how big you think you are, no matter how smart you think you are, when it comes to our sin nature, all of us are in the same boat. Can I preach it like I feel it? You can't look down on nobody. You can't put anybody down. Uh, you can't judge anybody. Uh, who you are trying to think you walking around better than everybody else when the Bible says we all have sinned uh, and come short of his glory. Yeah. Moving right along. Yeah, first cross. The first cross is a cross of rebellion. But then I'm still in the text. I'm still in the text, y'all. I'm still in the text. Because not only do I find a cross called rebellion, the second cross I see in this text, are y'all ready? Is a cross called repentance. I'm still right there, y'all. I'm still in the text. Yeah, I'm still right there. Yes, I am. Because you would notice that after the first man spoke, to which we have been told for years that there was one on the left side of Jesus. And then there was one on the right side of Jesus. I, I have to believe, y'all. I have to believe. I have to believe in my sanctified imagination, Butch. I have to believe that the one that spoke first was on the left. He was left out. He was left over. Y'all ain't saying nothing. He was on the left. Uh-huh. Because you know how folk, here, folk get to talking and it just seemed like they coming straight out of moving right along. Moving right along. But the second man spoke. I'm still in the text and I love it because if you look right there at verse 40 you would note that he begins first of all by rebuking the first man but then he turns around and reflects on himself I'm I'm in the text y'all want to see it look right there at verse 40 he said right there at verse 40 but the other answering 
rebuked him saying, do you not have any respect for God? Uh -huh, that's right. How dare you disrespect this man? Seeing, watch this, you're in the same boat he is. Do you not realize all of us hung up here on crosses? All of us have been sentenced to capital punishment. All of us are going to die at the hands of those folk at the foot of the cross. Have you ever seen anybody that even in a worse predicament, they still got an attitude? Yeah. <laughs> Who are you to look down on him seeing you are in the same condemnation? Watch verse 41. And he said, we deserve to be here. Come on, somebody, because what we're getting is the reward of our deeds. But this brother stuck between us, God help me, has done nothing wrong. Who are you to discredit him and he's innocent? After all, in my sanctified imagination, I have to believe that while the brother on the left was rebuking him, the one on the right was remembering. Can I preach like I feel it? I have to believe that somewhere along the highway, in the midst of his mess ups and mistakes he could say I remember him seeing him heal the sick I remember seeing him raise the dead I was there when he took spit and dirt y'all ain't gonna talk and laid it on a blind man's eyes and the man came back seeing so much so watch the text verse 42 says after he got through rebuking the brother on the left he took a look at himself and he said father when you get to your kingdom, when you get to your house, y'all ain't talking to me, when you come and reassume your throne, when you get back to your proper place in glory, if you would please remember the thief on the right. God help me preach. When you get to wherever you're going, please remember the brother that got the other brother straight and spoke up on your behalf. And I'm wondering if I got 75 folk in St. James this morning who can say when he gets back to his kingdom, I need him to remember how I spoke up on his behalf. I went when I didn't feel like going. I praised when everybody else was looking. Come on, Hezekiah, ride this train with me. Hezekiah set your house in order I feel like preaching this thing Because you gonna die and not live The Bible says Hezekiah turned his face to the wall And said Lord remember Is there anybody up in here Who can say I remember what he did for me But I need him to remember What I've done for him Where y'all I gotta go I gotta go I gotta go. I gotta go. Let me let me close this thing. Let me wrap this up. Let me wrap this up. God, this is good. Let me wrap this up. Well, the first cross was a cross of rebellion. Is that right? The second cross was a cross of repentance. But lest I keep us too long, finally, the third cross. Y'all ain't ready. Y'all ain't ready. The third cross that I find in this text is the cross called redemption. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Now I must share with us, beloved, that when we look at these two thieves, one on the right, one on the left, it goes without saying they both were criminals. They both deserved to be there. But can I show you something the one that was on the right that said, Father, remember me, came to understand something that I must share with us in closing. That is the measure of this man's sin. Did not alter the man's chance of being saved. What are you saying to me, Pastor? What I'm trying to tell you all is that it matters not what you've done. Matters not how you did it. I don't care what you used to do. I wish that you would read the Bible. Because the Bible says, if any man, God help me right there, be in Christ, he is a new creature. Paul said, the old things 
have passed away and all things God I feel like preaching this thing become brand new in other words there was no time for any of these things to matter nor was there any moment for this man to feel helpless or hopeless thinking that because of his wrongdoing he was not good enough to be saved because uh, the hymn writer put it this way I heard the voice uh, of Jesus say uh, come on uh, to me and rest uh, lay down thy weary one lay down y'all ain't talking uh, thy head uh, upon my breast uh, but I'm so glad that the hymn writer did not stop there. He said, uh, I came to Jesus. Uh, I wish I had some primitive Baptist folk in here. Just as uh, I was uh, weary, wound, and sad. Uh, but after I got there, y'all, uh, I found uh, in him uh, a resting place. Uh, and he has made me glad I found the cross of rebellion I found the cross of repentance but I'm so glad that while the cross on the left was the cross of rebellion and the cross on the right was the cross of repentance please my brothers and sisters don't forget that cross that was stuck between two thieves because on that cross y'all ain't talking here I find a word of redemption because if you look at the text I'm still there in verse 43 we find the third speaker and the third speaker that speaks up is the only one who did not deserve to be on the cross but had to be there for you and I because Isaiah said uh, he was wounded uh, for my transgressions. Where my Bible readers? Uh, he was bruised uh, for my iniquity. Uh, the chastisement of his peace uh, was laid upon him. Uh, and by his stripes, uh, I'm already healed. Uh, the third speaker uh, speaks up and says something uh, that is fitting not only for the man on the right uh, but I think I'll all stop here and tell y'all uh, it is also still good uh, for those of you striving to live right uh, can I preach like I feel it <laughs> because Jesus says uh, after the brother says remember me uh, when you come into your kingdom uh, Jesus Jesus says, Daddy said he stopped dying long enough to tell a dying thief this day. God help me in here. Thou shalt be with me in paradise. Can I deal with paradise a minute? Because when I look at paradise in the Greek, Reverend Washington, I discovered that paradise in the Greek is a place of pleasure. But the word paradise uh, has a Persian origination uh, because paradise in Persian uh, means a walled garden uh, because when a Persian king go to the Old Testament uh, wished to do one of his subjects a special honor he made him a companion uh, in the garden uh, in other words I'm going to the place of pleasure uh, but I'm about to take somebody with me uh, can I preach it like I feel it uh, it was more than just immortality uh, when Jesus said you'll be with me in paradise uh, it was more than just deliverance uh, for a dying thief uh, but it was uh, a new beginning uh, at an old place uh, can I preach it like I feel it uh, because Jesus said uh, because you asked me uh, because you repented uh, you asked me to remember you uh, you acknowledge your sin uh, you acknowledge 
your shortcoming uh, this day. Uh, you'll go in with me. Uh, in other words, I'm not waiting uh, until you get off the cross. Uh, I'm not waiting uh, until you get yourself together. Uh, but because you met me here, uh, I'm about to take you where I'm going. Uh, and I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, uh, is there anybody in here uh, who wants to go uh, to paradise? Uh, can I tell you where paradise is. If you got a minute, I'll tell you. Somebody holler, tell me. I'll be glad to tell you. In the 14th chapter of John, I heard Jesus say, let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. Are y'all ready for it? I go to prepare a place for you. And when I go, I'll come again to receive you under myself. Look at this. That where I am, there you may be also. I got the clothes here. But can I take it to the country? Because somebody in here ought to be able to rejoice. Because the same power paradise uh, that he promised to the thief on the right uh, is the same paradise uh, he promises to you and I uh, the same paradise uh, that he promised to the thief on the right uh, is the same deliverance uh, he gives to you and I uh, because when he said father forgive him uh, that was forgiveness at the cross uh, when he said you'll be with me in paradise uh, that let me know their salvation at the cross when he told woman behold thy son that let me know there's love at the cross when he said my God my God why have thou forsaken me there's a reconciliation at the cross when they said I thirst there was some suffering at the cross but when he said it's finished that lets me know there's victory at the cross when he says into thy hands I commend my spirit that lets me know I've got eternal security at the cross and I need I need I need I need somebody in here to witness with the hymn writer when the hymn writer said alas and did my savior bleed and did my sovereign die would he devote that sacred head for such a worm as I he said but drops of grief can never repay the debt of love I owe here Lord I give myself away it's all that I could do I heard the hymn writer say was it for crimes that I have done he bore upon the tree amazing in pity, grace unknown, and love beyond degree, because it was at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart roll away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and y'all got to excuse me, but now I'm happy all the day. I'm so glad he was hung up for my hangers. He was laid down for my get downs, but early Sunday morning he got up out of that grave proclaiming all power, all power in my hand. Is there somebody here that feel like praising because you already know he made you a promise. He promised paradise some glad morning. When this life is over, I'm going to fly away from here soon. I will be done with the trouble of the world because he died just for me. Ain't God all right? Ain't God all right? Is he the best thing that ever happened to you? Say it. Say it. Say 
yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm done. Well, beloved, as you can see, we are certainly out of time, but we are not out of message. As we come to the close of this another Great Awakenings broadcast, it is my prayer that your life has been blessed, that it has been impacted, and it has been inspired by today's broadcast. I'd like to say good morning to all of our watchers and our viewers, especially those in the Hunter Hill Nursing Home and all of our nursing home, convalescent homes, and hospitals across the area. Our prayers are always with you that God will continue to bless and strengthen you. Come share with us right here at the St. James Missionary Baptist Church. St. James is located 527 East Thomas Street, just off of Raleigh Boulevard in the city of Rocky Mount. Join us for Sunday school each Sunday morning at 9.45 a.m. Our Sunday morning worship celebration begins at 11 o'clock a.m. Come gain knowledge of the Word of God by joining us for Bible study on Tuesday evenings at 6.30 p.m. or on Thursday mornings at 11.30 a.m. If you're unable to join us on Bible studies on Tuesday night, we are so excited to also announce that our Bible studies are also aired live via conference call on Tuesday evenings. The conference call information is located at the bottom of the screen. All you'll have to do is call that number, enter that access code, and you will be able to hear our Bible study live on Tuesday nights. If you need transportation and would like to come join us, our transportation ministry stands ready to assist you in making sure that you arrive to St. James Church on time and in time for worship on Sunday. If today's service has been a blessing to you, the service in its entirety is available on audio CD as well as video DVD. All you'll have to do is contact our church office at 252-442-2318 and the phone will lead you directly into our media outreach department and they will assist you in securing your copy for your continued inspiration and blessing by the word. As we come to the end of this television broadcast, I want to personally say thank you for your support as well as for taking the time for tune in to the Great Awakenings television broadcast and I look forward to having you back with us on next Saturday for another opportunity in the word of God. Until our next television broadcast, may the blessings of the Lord be with you now and always. God bless.